let's proceed with our data stream refactoring that actually um, is by now far more than a refactoring so maybe the first few steps were really refactoring in the sense of restructuring the code while keeping the features at constant now we start to actually um, add new features and take advantage of our restructuring and the last thing we implemented today in the in the previous part was the context reporting or at least part of the context reporting that we need for our streams and there were some new questions coming up for example where do we actually get the strings the descriptive strings that we want to present uh, in order to describe the context we are in and I made some design decisions now we need two strings for each context uh, the first one is the what we call the title that's a short string to be uh, presented to the left of all, all the stream offsets and then there is the, descript the description string which is either to be uh, presented uh, to the right of the offsets or in the case of streams that define their own uh, new address space it will be displayed prominently in its in a line by itself so that's what we what we need these two strings and I decided on the following now that the title stream will be kept very simple usually this will be just a pointer to a constant uh, character array and we will just give our data streams so let's yeah we will just give our data streams a pointer to the context title and let's say here so th this will get some default setting from the initializer of each stream that it will basically be something like the class name and the user is free to set this to uh, whatever the, the user code wants it's just that we won't do any fancy thing with ownership and so on so we will note it down here um, this should be a short human readable um, short human readable word or phrase describing which kind of stream this is the pointed to data must remain valid throughout throughout the lifetime of the stream the stream does not take ownership of the data you must free it yourself if necessary okay and that's basically everything we need for the title of course we should take care that it is set by our implementations so let's go through all our init init functions not for the string collector 
for the array stream, for example, we will just set this uh, to array data stream. So context title is in this case test data stream. Yeah, this is using the, the one above, so no problem here. actually wonder maybe I should have set it just to null pointer and provided a default in the context query function yeah I'm not I'm not sure if it makes a difference Okay, those were the cases and we will we will just use to use it here so this will be context title I mean, yeah, I think it's fine. Almost fine. We should of course do this because this could, this could have some formatting inside and so on. So we currently don't have an assign, assign function here, which we should have probably to or a copy, kind of a string copy function here simply copies the string so let's let's make a note for that and here the same So that was the title. Uh, more interesting is the description string. And for that, I actually want to have a simple callback interface because the description string could be, could be much more interesting. And Let's just, and we also will supply a default. So uh, the default will be just that you set this, you, you set a fixed character string as, as the description. So that's also very fast because you just copy the pointer to constant data. So we will have a const context description data uh, that that is the the, the user data for uh, the context uh, description callback that we will install here. I, I mean I, I'm not sure if we should actually have these two callback functions. We will see how it works out. But I think it will simplify the task of adding. Um, I want to encourage user code to add a nice description of its own. 
And I think this will be encouraged if it is as easy as possible to write such a context description function. So this is basically just user data passed to context description function. So how would such a function uh, look like a context description function? So we will for sure get the stream. It will get the user data, of course. Uh, it will get the query. And I think that's it. It does not need to return any, oh, it does, it, um, it will return something. But I'm not sure if it's a nice design. I, I just need to get something running to see. Um, because it will return the handle to the description string um, in query strings. That's the idea. So uh, let's make a very simple default implementation of this thing. Where do we put it? We will put it here at the beginning of, of our implementation. We call it something like data stream default context description and this will just return string collector as printf again again here we could use the the string copy if there was one so uh, string collector as printf query strings uh, one is used for the for the description field. I mean, here we should probably use something like data stream context info um, field description. I'm not I'm not sure if we if we really need these maybe it should also be written like this I don't know so we have a field title and the field description I don't know if we really need these field identifiers at all, honestly. They are a feature of our string collector interface with the idea that the string collector could potentially deal differently with, uh, for example, overflows uh, of, of, of fixed size buffers depending on which, which field uh, this is about. But Maybe this is a bit over engineering. So we will just cast data to a character point. Actually, we don't even need to cast because this is this doesn't know what it gets anyway, I guess. Or maybe to, to avoid a warning. <clears throat> Two things to note here, could use a string copy of the collector 
and yeah about the field I will make a note in the string collector interface Because this is a big downside, it changes it changes the signature of this function from the from our standard printf function callback signature that has just a pointer and then then the format string. That's the main downside. Okay, that will be the default default context description. And actually that's it's really getting to the point that that it would be would be nice to have a default initializer for even for the abstract so to say abstract data stream class context description function is data stream context description function um, So this will be set here. And the user data. Actually, they should be more careful about the null pointer zero. So a null pointer user data. So this should uh, this should actually check whether data is null and create an empty string if it's null instead of crashing. And yeah, I think that's fine. So let's put those two registers and let's add them to our to the other initializers that's what I'm saying yeah it would would probably be better to um, to have a standard an initializer that sets these default values. That's it, and now we need to use that in the in the context 
query functions. So we will actually Actually, you know what? We should probably probably do this when the function pointer is zero anyway. So that what we do here should be, uh, we check cons uh, description function pointer and if this is set, then we call it with the stream. We query and the user data context description data. Otherwise, uh, we call data stream default uh, again I mean this should we wrap this or should we always, should we rely on that being non-zero and just set it to the default? Yeah, I mean, probably we do it for other stuff too. Uh, in debug mode, let's assert this. Because I mean the 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 default implementation will always the default implementations will always set this to something non null. Only the user can overwrite it, and then the user has to overwrite it with a valid function pointer. Otherwise, they get what they deserve. Uh, what I don't like so much, we now are accumulating some stuff here that we will um, we will do in every of these every of these implementations, and there we actually already wrote that we actually want to have a helper for filling out this info, and then the helper can could also do this this safety check. That's probably the better design. Uh, which other one do we have? Um, I think the seeking substream, right? Yeah. So we will we will create this kind this kind of of helper. Okay, so it's working. It's just we don't ha we don't have a description currently for the array data stream. Because it's defaulting to Maybe in this case If you have an empty description for a stream that creates its own um, address space, uh, 
we probably should just print this line without the without the indentation. <laughs> so maybe for the title width We check here whether this is something that that creates its own address space. And maybe we, sh we should do something like that. That if, um, if we do have a, if we do have a non-empty description, then we print it. Otherwise, and uh, now let's say this, to, let's set this to two by default. Uh, no, no, so indentation for title in this case. Let's actually call this title indent. And instead of these two spaces here, we will put here title indent. Yeah, so in this case, the array data stream. Oh, okay, but then it should add the two spaces. We should subtract that from the others. Max with title minus title, and then we should subtract it here. That actually had the opposite. Oh, because this is negative. Stupid me. That's why it had the opposite effect, because we are 
negating this in order to get left alignment. Yeah, now it looks right. So that would just be the compact way to write it if we don't have a description. And if we have a description, because for example the user supplied one, let's say we, we would say here uh, context description data is our great array stream. Yeah, then it would be printed here, here on an extra line by itself. And the non-indented line always signifies that a new address space starts here. I mean, which you also can normally tell by, yeah, you cannot really tell. You, there always will be a zero here if it starts a new, new address space, but there could also be a zero without it starting a new address space. So maybe we should add some additional symbol signifying that, but yeah, I don't know. I think with the with the unindented line description lines in between it will be very clear, but without them maybe it will not be not be so clear. So maybe we should just instead of the description line print a separator line. <clears throat> it just says something like nested stream address space or so. Okay, whatever. Let's um, actually now, let's make this kind of helper for let's make this kind of helper for filling out for filling out the info And I think this helper will can already help us with something else that will come up, namely with um, where to actually put this thing into the the infos array. So we'll just say the the new inter the new style will be that we say info pointer info equals, and now we will call the helper. Um, data stream prepare context info this will get a depth so it will get the, the, the query and we'll get a depth index. String, the stream, the query, the depth, depth index. And
uh, context info point uh, data stream prepare. So it gets the data stream, it gets the query. and the depth. Actually, I shouldn't have removed this. We still need that. So this we will set to a default of zero. These probably won't have defaults. These will be set like this. Yeah, actually we could now really do this, this check because that now it's only a single place where, where we do it. Yeah, that's, that's nicer. So this and this will be gone. Two products flex or equals. And this will no longer be needed. That's simple. So same here. Here we actually pass the depth here. This is gone, this is gone. The offsets and this is gone. Actually, we should also say that only if info is non-zero, we do that. Otherwise, we understand that we should skip. We should skip this. So still working. So let's try in the in the unit test. Let's try out how difficult it is to provide a customized description. Be some something like this custom uh, stream description and what was the interface uh, I think it gets the data stream it gets the query uh, and it gets the user data Normally the user data will be something useful. So, but And now we should just need the string collector sprintf 
uh, query strings. Yeah, the annoying thing is we need this field uh, data stream context info field description. That's a bit annoying that we need that. And then we can write um, a great array stream length is um, whatever and name is the following the length will be us and ascend minus us both and this will be character pointer of beta so and that's that's it and here we will uh, a stream will be called Frank and the function will be custom stream description okay that did we compile it or Okay, so this did not, this did not work. Why? Oh, there was an error that we did not we did not get for some reason. Why did we not? Why was this error not displayed by the quick fix? It has file and then in parentheses the number. Do we have a problem with our error format? File line. That would be this one. Zero one space. Column. So zero one space column, then error. Colon, a space type error So this is non-digit. Non-digits and then the number. Column. I mean that oh maybe this comma could this be a problem? <clears throat> Sorry that I'm held up by my configuration here, but I don't get this. What is, what is wrong here? Why is this not? What is wrong? 
I'm somehow suspecting that because the strange anonymous namespace rendering that there is some some problem with the regular expression matching because for all other errors it seemed to have have worked. Yeah, I'm not going to debug this now, but um, I need to debug it later. So this needs to return info, of course. Hey, Dolorosa7, how is it going? Yeah, moderately good. <laughs> uh, if if my, my Vim configuration would work, it would be growing great. How is it going for you? I hope you're not fighting configurations like I do. Now it is working. Our stream has a name and a length and it is displayed nicely. Okay, I think the next step will be to fill in the implementation of this context reporting for all the other stream implementations that we have. We don't have that many currently. The most interesting are the file stream and the inflate stream. So let's see, array, array and test data stream we did. They are not too interesting. The limited data stream is also also not too interest but nevertheless we must we must supply a we must supply a um, implementation for it so data stream context function we must supply it Actually, we should we should probably do all of these that they have the implementation in a. Uh, here I have it in an impl namespace, which I don't know is such a good idea. Because. Okay, something like finish, this actually needs to be public. But fetch, for example, shouldn't be public, shouldn't be public. Because that should only ever be called via the abstract interface, I would think. So things that just implement the abstract interface should probably be moved inside an anonymous namespace. Also these ones. So we shouldn't need the impl anymore. Yeah, and we need uh, we need implement the context function. So it doesn't get a status. 
gets the data stream, it gets the, the query. Let's get any, I never remember these interfaces. Yeah, that's it. So finish needs to be visible and bytes left also needs to be visible. Okay, and then we actually already get to Oh there yeah there is another thing we need to consider. So here also we, we will call the upstream. Actually, actually this will be exactly the same as for the seeking substream. So maybe the seeking substream can just super to super to this. I think it's exactly the same because I mean the only difference for the seeking substream is that it can be it can be detached but this does not play any role here. So it can be detached from its stream buffer, but it still has its start position, it still has its stream position, it still has its fetch position. Yeah, it has everything. Of so that's actually nice. So here we just can delegate to the limited data stream implementation Here again, so yield needs to be, no, yield also is an implementation detail, fetch is an implementation detail, seek is, advance is, um, I actually made a note there already for moving this. We move all this to the anonymous namespace. They are all implementation details. Okay, and then we actually already get to the file. Uh, my typing is becoming worse and worse. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to getting a real keyboard here. And then I think I need to do some practice. So um, I think for the file data stream, we will actually implement a description function. File data stream context description. That's the file data stream, it gets the context query and the user data. Let's print f query strings. 
context info field description, which is the one that I always see. And how did we do this? Something like reading file and then the file name was what we did. So file name, this is, this will have to change somehow when we, when we really do proper Unicode support on the, on the Windows. So let's make a note here. We will then probably have to convert this back and forth to and from UTF-8 or something. Or maybe we will restore the file name as UTF-8 and convert it when we need to go to the Windows API or something like that. So that should be our description and we will fill that in. So we will say that our context uh, description function is Data stream context description function this one and uh, context function we can immediately do that will actually be a, a should be a rather simple one. It's just the length of the file. Yeah, we should try to get the length of the file. That's the only interesting thing here. Otherwise it will be um, almost as simple as the array data stream context. So file data stream context. Oh, actually this is something I can fold into this prepare context info. This if here. So let's do that. Let's forward that this is one thing less we need to think about uh, in these kind of functions. So if um, query infos and allocated, let's say if def is greater or equal the number of allocated infos, we return null pointer, so then there's nothing to fill in. Then we can get rid of one layer here of conditions. Yeah, this is getting cleaner. I like that. Yeah, this, this the, the skipping of the intermediate levels is something that we will actually do in the prepare function here. when we want to do that. So that's another advantage of this function. So we can get rid of, get rid of this. Fine. So here, yeah, we definitely, the file definitely defines its own address space. It starts at zero. Uh, and then, okay. And now we will need to do some, some real file stuff. Current offset is not difficult because this is something that we actually remember in our stream. But the end offset, that's really the length of the file. And uh, 
and the file size we might or might not know the file size we will try to get it so minus one means unknown to our system so let's try to get the file size and we will ignore we will ignore errors in this in this process i think somewhere somewhere i already do that because we have a seek a seek offset function that can seek from the end yeah that's this this here it's this 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 so we should probably lock the at least we, we will not fail on windows system error we should probably lock it somehow but currently we don't have a logging infrastructure yet so um, let's make ourselves a helper function query let's say query query file size so now we have these stupid large integers Uh, yeah, background about this um, data stream. So the immediate background of this data stream um, stuff is that it is used in the PDF parser and in the decoders that are subordinate to that PDF parser. So a lot of that actually already exists. So th there is a working PDF parser uh, where with working I mean there is enough that you can extract streams streams from a PDF um, you can parse the basic data types in the PDF like dictionaries and arrays and uh, strings and integers and booleans and so on um, there's also a jpeg2 image decoder that is already using this stream library and there will be much more so in the end um, one of the goals is to completely understand a pdf file and be able to extract all all data from it and ultimately also to to render the the pdf file so that's the context of this of this work and that's also why, why this uh, stream library is currently only for reading. And probably when I need writing, I will do a separate thing so not to mix up the abstractions because they don't really mix well, I think, for, for reading and writing. <clears throat> So, okay, uh, I actually I actually declare this as a U and offset so I don't have the stupid uh, large integer thing. Okay, now I need I need to do this differently. Distance to move will be zero. We will do this. No, but I mean that no, that's that's much too complicated. There is actually a file size function. Why? Why I'm not? Oh, I now I remember where I did this. 
I did this in my programming tool. Where am I? Yeah, here it is. This is much easier. This is much easier. So how is the handle called? Just handle. I could have guessed that. So here we should um, uh, lock the error. Do not raise a failure here because the context reporting subsystem is um, does never fail by definition. We report an unknown file length on failure. So we just return minus one. Otherwise, we may just make a sanity check. So this will be the file size large integer quad part. today. Yeah, we will do that. Should we call it maybe or try? Try to query file size because to highlight that this can return an unknown file size. So, that's it. Actually, we don't need the extra variable here now. Um, Okay, is, th is this a complete implementation? Does this work? So we will need to test it. We don't use the, we don't use the user data here. I mean, we could, could do something here that we can add some extra information without overriding this function, but I'm not sure it's important. Let's just see if anything compiles and then we will make a unit test that uses the file data stream. Okay, so limited data Really, limited data stream does not have a start position. Indeed. Indeed, it doesn't. Because probably it cannot seek at all. But that's, that just means we could 
upon initialization we could read we could read the start position that's a bit of a pity that we because that's for sure interesting the start position so let's move it here and for the limited uh, for this one let's set it to the position of the upstream Oh, yeah, fetch pause. Okay. But this... We shouldn't... Question is, can we always calculate? <coughs> sorry, can we always calculate the next fetch position? In a way that is common to the limited data stream and the, se the seeking substream. You would normally think that the fetch position is always the current position plus what is the number of characters that are left that are left in the buffer so you would think that fetch pos should always be uh, the current position so which we already already got here plus however many bytes we still have left in the stream buffer. So here we will, um, let's say revisit this and verify that this calculation of fetch pause is consistent with a seeking substream fetch pause. Okay, we have an overloaded function probably because we messed up our prototype or something. We should actually remove these things here. So they should actually be removed here. Everything that is not public should be removed here. Init finish n bytes left is fine. Init yield and nothing else, I think. That yeah, that's that's nice. That also cleans up. Have a here. I probably will get, I probably will get problems when I remove some of these. But that those problems need to be fixed anyway. So let's let's see. Uh, which kind of problems we get when we remove these. F 
File data stream fetch. Yeah, this this should not, this should call data stream fetch. Okay, we still have the problem with the overloaded function. File data stream fetch, is this still below? Yeah, this is still below. This needs to be moved into the anonymous namespace. All, all of these. And not the seek offset though. That's something that is specific to specific to the file stream. Fail context remove. Yeah, and then we get the inflate data stream. This is, we have not yet implemented everything for the inflate data stream. Uh, let's see. Why do we get this funky overloaded function? Uh, do we have multiple? Of we only have one. We only have one. No. Ah, this is still here. Okay, that's the problem, and that's not in the anonymous. So yield yield should not be yield should not be in the anonymous namespace because that's a public interface. So yield should be outside. That's the problem. Because we had two two functions with the same name living in different namespaces, uh, or at least we didn't really have two functions, but we had one declaration uh, besides the actual function that we declared and defined. And so the compiler was thinking that there were two different functions with the same name. File data stream seek. So probably we have a stupid ordering. No. This should not be used here. This should be data stream seek. Also this one. So we should not be calling implementation detail functions here. looks like it like it worked okay this is still working let's let's check if anything else is if the pdf yeah pdf parser is still working uh, let's check the jvc2 decoder this is a long 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 learning test but it seems to be doing fine don't know if I will have the patience to let that run through. Yeah, maybe we can let it run through. And in the meantime, we can write a unit test for, for the file stream context. So test file file data stream context query. So let's open a file data stream. As our underlying stream. 
I think we can only open it. Okay, we need a buffer for it, whatever. File name, do we have something here that already sets a file name? No. We have it here, I think, yeah. Yeah, interesting question is, um, yeah, we need, we need a kind of test file to read. I mean, uh, for now I will just put a dummy file that we know is in the, in the current directory. Let's see if this, if we can open this. So the JB2 tests also passed. So things are still working um, while we are here messing up the whole, the whole stream library. Oh, this is of course, a, I must check the status, not the stream. Yeah, this worked. We can open the file. So let's go to a position in the file. Let's go to position one, two, three, four. Should work. And then let's do something like this. Let's format let's format the stream context at this point. We actually will need something like this. So the query data structures. Yeah, there should really be there should really be an init function for that. That's a bit too much boilerplate. So let's see what kind of what kind of context do we get? None so far. I mean, the test is passed, but did we not, did we compile or not? Yeah, we compiled. Printf to standard out query. Oh, I actually didn't query anything. Yeah, this this also should um, should use a wrapper. This we should also comment here. We still need to create this wrapper. So let's actually query something. <clears throat> oh, S one, S two. Yeah, that's that's one that's one reason for the wrapper actually that it avoids the duplication of the object. Nice reading file PCRE DLL. I'm not sure about the colon after this. I think we should get rid of the colon. This is in format context, I guess. Yeah, here, we should get rid of the colon. But otherwise, so we are at position one, two, three, four. The file starts at zero and this should be the file size. So let's check that. 
Yeah, that's the file size. That's fine. I'm not totally totally thrilled about that format. Um, okay, we don't have a title for. Did we not set a title for? Ah, oh, probably we do. We should set a title for the file data stream. And open. So. We should set that. But it's nice, so our custom context description function is working here. It is giving, it is correctly identifying the file. Uh, the file size detection works. Nice. So let's put let's put a substream. Let's put a substream into the file stream. And let's do a, a limited so we seek to one, two, three, four. Uh, let's put a seeking substream first. Uh, let's um, of length, let's say a hundred bytes. So that doesn't need anything more to init. We could add a description string if you want to. Testing this sort of file data stream. And then we query actually the context of stream one, not of stream zero. Okay, we had a problem. Yeah, the depth is increased, of course. That's, I mean, that's fine. So the depth, the depth is two now because we have two nested contexts. Yeah, nice. That, that looks nice. I mean, whether it looks nice is, is a, maybe could be a matter of debate, but the information is there that we need. So let's put another, let's put a limited substream, or how is it called, limited, limited data stream inside. inside of the seeking substream limited to 50 bytes testing nesting oh we should ask this now for the and the depth will increase so 
We could, of course, also ask the stream number one. We will ask stream number two and we expect three contexts. So let's close the preview. Testing nesting. Nice. It starts at the same position because we did not we did not seek. And here we could, for example, we could start to inject some entropy here. So let's let's seek the seeking substream to Do I have something like this? No. This I have, okay. That's of course much too large. So mm, let's say, let's just put a few bytes so we can sometimes, uh, let's do it like this. So we often get zero. Yeah, so now we sometimes get different positions, sometimes the same. And depending on that, we get indentation or no indentation. I mean, likewise, we could modify the length here. We could say, So let's put actually, let's put this offset offset from, let's say from offset two from one. Is this random number? Let's say this is 100 minus offset two one minus test ra random so we sometimes should be at the same end position yeah now we are <clears throat> now those two strings are at the same end position. Yeah, one, one thing that I, here is something that I still need to improve. We can have different positions here. That's actually, yeah, that, that is like that in the in our data stream system. But I would like to, I would like to actually report the innermost position because that's where the error, if, if I mean, this is usually used in an error report or in debugging uh, and we are always most interested about, about the innermost position here. And we would like to know, for example, the file offset of this, this one. And so we are mostly, mostly interested in where this position lies with respect to the other stream contexts and not where their, their current position lies. We, we probably want to know both, but my idea is that here I write something like 
in this case I would write 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 1 and actually report everything relative to the innermost position. But have here also the, the plus 1, so we, uh, yeah. And actually in the end I, I probably will only report the add plus 1 here and report the position down here separately. Because anyway, we have it because the outermost string con stream context will always start at offset zero, so we will have it anyway uh, as as the delta here if we report the innermost position here. So that that's something I I want to do. even though it will look confusing to people who don't know the system intimately. But on the other hand, I mean, all of this will be confusing if you don't know the stream system. So if you don't know the stream system, the part of the error message that will make sense to you is probably the first line that we are, we are reading a sort of file and then there is a, a problem. Okay, I will um, take a short break and then we will proceed to the inflate data stream. So that's, the, that's our first nested data stream that creates its own address space because in the compressed data you don't have a one-to-one -one relation of decompressed bytes to um, input bytes. So that will be interesting to test and uh, that's, that's the, next th the next thing we will do. Next thing we will attack is the uh, what is going on in the data stream is the inflate data stream that uh, provides setlib deflation and also some extensions to setlib deflation so some post processing. Um, I think similar to what is used in PNG that is defined by the PDF standard. So let's um, clean up the code first by we will again put some things into an anonymous namespace, not the init of course. But the fetch function, wow, this is a huge command. The advanced function, the, oh, and, and this is interesting. I don't know, is this, um, I need to check whether this is an implementation detail or whether this is something public. Oh, that's, that is a development command, command uh, regarding the predictor that is this, this post-processing post -processing, uh, step um, after the actual inflate decompression. So let's check where this inflate end is used. Um, nowhere actually currently in this file. So it seems to be something that, okay, we can actually get rid of this stuff. Seems to be something that is available externally. Uh, let's just try to comment it out and see what breaks. Okay, so we do use it. Is this the only place?
Yeah, that's the only place that uses it. I think I actually should call that done like I is my convention that I started to use as, as opposite to init if that's what it does. And normally done, yeah. The problem is the done function should normally not have a status argument because that status argument in my code base always means that this function might fail which is not good for the initialization functions okay the problem is it calls inflate and and inflate and can fail Yeah, I mean, we should check if this also free, uh, but I think it should free memory because otherwise our leak detection should have already found that we are leaking here. So that's actually a public thing that should go outside here. <clears throat> so let's um, just start this. Yeah, this this looks good. So it's also a long test, so we will not let it pass, I guess. But this is actually reading a real real world PDF file, and it's. Yeah, it's it's currently not a passing test, so that is fine. The, the assertion failure at the end because this is just a test for trying out stuff that measures some things and then asserts false, but that's fine. Uh, the first thing I would like to find is a A test uh, test vector for deflate. Let's not spend too much time here. We will just we will just dump some dump some test test data from a PDF that has a deflate stream in it. So here, um, the only question is: Do we know the length of the? Do we know the length of the data already here? So. 
so cross reference stream object parser dictionary We do have a length We don't do anything with it actually So let's say is a debug of late length uh, equals new imam Yeah, I think that was right. We will remove that later. But if we have that, if that works, then we can actually just dump the data here. So let's say what we do, dumping uh, this many bytes to test of that, let's say. So this will be throwaway code, so I don't do my usual error handling here. We actually need to read from, not from the inflate stream, but from the input stream here. Why did I say inflate? It's called deflate, right? Oh no, it's the in deflate is the is the compression algorithm and inflate is the, the decompression, right? Yeah. So that's the actually the deflated data that we have here. So let's just read it all in. Uh, status stream buffer length. And then let's write it to the file and I always need to look up these functions so because they have this number of elements and size of elements and I never remember which is which and so on so size count is the thing pointer size count file pointer uh, size of, of an element is one count is how much we want to write and then file dump file and I guess this should be the number of bytes written Uh, let's see if this works. I mean, we will probably kill our program, but we could probably avoid killing the program if we reset the stream pointer. Uh, 
if we seek back to the original position we might not even destroy everything although i'm not sure but that's not the point here yeah okay it is right okay should have no 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 should have passed this one Okay, we are not really interested in that, but whatever. Pause uh, is start pause. Let's see if we get some, some data dumped. No, we don't have any. So this did not trigger. I mean, maybe this file does not have a cross-reference stream. I certainly do have files with cross-reference stream. Oh, this one, yeah, this one has a cross-reference stream. I commented that out. So uh, thirty seven bytes only. That's surprising. I mean, could be that it has such a small cross reference. Uh, let's actually check. Let's check if it really has such a tiny cross reference stream. The file itself is huge, so it takes a long time to load here. How is it called? Something with xref, right? That's already a small one. another one uh, maybe it's better to look at the output So 33 bytes. Let's see if we got them. Yeah, they are there. How do you do the 
canonical format. I never remember that. There's there's a flag for the for the canonical format. TX1 probably is useful for us. I thought there was another one that... Maybe that was not OD. So TX1 should be useful for us. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if, if the length is actually the length is actually okay. Do we have a length 37? Yeah, we have a length 37 here. This is flat decoded. A length 37 object stream. Okay, so that's actually the object stream, not the not the XREF stream. But still, I mean, it should be valid. The only thing that we need is that it is valid uh, setlib data, right? That's the only thing we need. So let's just copy this stuff and let's put it into our unit test. Let's create a new unit test for inflate. Okay, so we have the data here. So let's create let's create first an array data stream that actually provides this input data. No, I don't want to scan the IPCC report. It's much too long, so let's let's close that. Uh, Sixteen. So 
so that is our nice input data stream and based on that we will create an inflate data stream and let's actually start to call it s2 because i will later put one in the middle So the predictor spec, how does a predictor spec look like? Uh, I think, yeah, it should be more documented because I think predictor equals one is no predictor. We do need to provide a buffer for the decompressed data. And that's it. We should be able to, to read decompressed data now. So let's, okay, excuse me, I need to open the door so let's just read some bytes from the stream Oh, that's because of the of the const. I tend to completely ignore const in my new coding style because it's so I find it so useless overall. Yeah, this does not work here. Of course, I need to expect OK. Uh, same here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we got ten bytes. We fail because we ah, and look look how nice our system is. It detected a leap uh, a, a, a leak of one memory block, and it's an internal state for setlib stream. Isn't that great? We immediately know what we are leaking, and of course. It's obvious why we are leaking it, because we did not call the the done function on the on the data stream. That's why we are leaking. And all the all the unit tests that used a text a test fixture that's, that is derived from test random with memory, they automatically do a leak check. So that's what, what we saw here. Um, <laughs> now it's less nice because we actually get an access violation, so there is something broken. This we of course now we need to debug.
maybe this does not really work yet if we do not really consume the whole do not really consume the whole stream but that's now something we need to debug but we do get i mean we do get some some data here and we could actually start to to see if we get some context reporting it could of course be that we already die before that we expect currently two levels of context oh actually i had a this shouldn't be zero here Okay, so maybe we die before we can actually do something there. So let's start up the debugger to see what's going on. Should already have the right executable. Yeah, has the right executable. So let's just write. Oh, we again. Yeah, we tried to to execute something at zero, so it means one of our function pointers is not initialized. So in our inflate data stream, we forgot we forgot to initialize uh, so this is Yeah, the con we do not initialize the context function. And because we do not yet use the proper wrapper, we just crash when this happens. Oh, it's not yet implemented. So it defines its own address space. The end offset, yeah, this, this is something I need to research because, because I don't know if we can immediately tell how long the decompressed data will be. Let's for now say it is unknown. Then we can also check the code paths in our context reporting that handle the unknown offset. Okay, we, ah, I made a mistake. It's not so easy because we, we actually need to, we need to query our upstream. Where do I do that? Oh, uh, I do it like here. So, but here it's, I think it's not called the upstream, it's called the input stream. 
maybe should use a maybe should use the same identifier in both cases to always call it the upstream or something oh and i need to i need to return def plus one How far do we get? We do get a report. Okay, the inflated stream currently has no description. That's not so nice. We should, we should definitely uh, create a description for it. It has an unknown end. Yeah, that, that is handled correctly. Yeah, what is, what is not nice is uh, we do not really see the, the address space separation. So, just to improve that a little bit um, just to improve that a little bit what we probably should do um, If we are if we are at a non-zero depth here, Nested substream with um, I think that's not a very nice formulation, but At least it will give us something. this rest space I meant so how does it look like a ready data stream in nested substream starting a new address space inflate data stream um,
in the following nested substream. which introduces its own address space, maybe something like that. Okay, that is <clears throat> better, I think. Let's let's just check where, why we are still crashing. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look good. That is a corrupted object. Why is the stream object so badly, so badly corrupted? Let's see if it is corrupted to begin with. Yeah, it's already it's already messed up. So we need to find out who is hurting our our data object. Let's have a look at S2. Is S2 already bananas? No, S2 is doing fine. Do we make a stupid mistake when calling this function? No, I think it's still, it's still fine. So it seems to be the inflate end that is killing us. So no error here. And that looks mostly reasonable window is zero so nothing will happen here Uh, 
so it's probably probably this one actually let's take a look at our memory oh it's just i don't know if we can do it Let's see if these things look reasonable. Yeah, that looks that looks like a plausible pointer. Oh, a mem is Aha, uh -huh, okay, mem is is wrong. Mem is not correctly initialized. Why that? So that's of course, yeah, if, if that is the case, for sure we will we will fail here. So no need to no need to look further. Here, setlib mem is still fine. Was it this? Let's see if it's still fine. Yeah, still fine. Still looking good. So it must be our stream pointer that we get here that is completely wrong because yeah this this s is wrong that we get in the callback the s should be one EF two forty and we get one EF A forty. That is wrong. Why? <clears throat> Why is this wrong? Yeah, the opaque pointer is 1EF A40. So the, point, the opaque pointer is already... The opaque pointer has a problem already.
Oh. <clears throat> That's actually completely wrong. How did this, how could this, how could this work before? Did I mess this up now? Because that should be S, not ST here. Maybe this was never called <laughs> so far because I mean this should be for sure it should be s uh, setlib string opaque we set it to st here And to S here. And that's actually wrong. The opaque pointer should point to our stream structure because for the memory management, for example, we get the memory manager from it. Yeah, now it works. Fine. Fixed. We are at position 10 in the inflate data stream. And now what I actually would like to do is to put the inflate data stream actually not at offset zero. Let's say put it at offset four. So let's put a let's put a limited substream in between. to four expect to k then we make it to a limited substream and we will put this in on the limited substream and we actually expect to get depth three now in the report Let's see, we have the array data stream within that, we have a limited substream. Yeah, and now within that, we have the following, the, the inflate data stream, but the inflate data stream has its own new address space starting at zero.
And we actually see that at the point where we, where we read, read the 10 data bytes that the setlib, the setlib has already read this stream to completion. So we have zero here to the end. The question is, in this case of nested situation, would it be more useful here to report the, where the inflate data stream starts within the outer context? Maybe that's more useful than the current position. The problem is it's hard to tell because if you're reporting a problem that comes from uh, interpreting the data in the innermost stream context, then it probably is more useful to report where this thing started. On the other hand, if you're reporting something like a read error that comes from the underlying stream, And then maybe the, the actual positions here are interesting. I probably I will give this a description to, to, to say in, in inflate data stream starting at position such and such, then you always know the start position. I mean, basically things are working. That's the first good thing. I'm, I'm just thinking about whether to further go into details here to improve this or, or whether we should first integrate the whole thing into our error reporting. So let's see what we would need to do in order to integrate the new context reporting into our error reporting. Currently, our error reporting is handled by these uh, fail context functions. So every <clears throat> every every stream has this kind of fail context function. And they are printing what is currently, so this is the status quo of our error reporting, which is, as previously discussed, is not really good because it's very confusing to read. It's not clear how the nesting is of these substreams and so on. And so that's what we actually want to improve with what we do currently. So I think these these are really no longer needed, these functions. They will be removed soon. This is maybe the only one that The only one that gives some information that we currently don't have in the new reporting. So 
So we will need to take care that this is... So for sure we have the relative position, we have the length of the substring, we know where it is starting, we know where it is extending to. Uh, the next fetch is something we do not... We probably don't know the next fetch position. I think everything else we have. So let's look at the other thing. Yeah, this is not very interesting. Okay, in the inflate data stream, it has the, the starting position, which is nice. Uh, So what we should do, we have the input start offset here, that's good to know. So what we should first do is we make a, uh, we make a context description function for inflate data stream. We do have one for the file stream currently, as I remember. Yeah. So we will make something similar for the inflate data stream. Compressing data stream, starting at position, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have it in a hexadecimal. We probably should do like this to make it clear that it's hexadecimal. We will set the function pointer for this. Inflate data stream context description. This should already have improved what we see in our example, I think, in our current unit test. Let's try that. Yeah, it's already better. It's just that um, we should not put the new line there. That's all. <clears throat> and now we actually, we actually, um, we should be able to, to write a generic data stream fail context function. Because this currently delegates to a function pointer. And here we should be able to do something like what we do in the unit test. Uh, 
It's just the, the interesting question is um, how many levels will we report? So that's something that is still um, um, handle deeper context stacks. There are two ways we could do it. We could either dynamically allocate the context info to the required depth or we could do something else, which I'm planning is that we only uh, report the outermost and innermost levels. And if there are more in the middle, we just omit them. That's also a possibility. possibility. So uh, basic string collector. That's also, yeah, the, the strings are also uh, currently pre in a pre-allocated buffer. We should here probably use a buffer provided by the status subsystem. So next thing is if this function is actually If this is a null pointer, we actually don't need any of this. We cannot do any of this. So we should use wrapper. I mean, we are the wrapper in a, in a way here, but we could have a, sub, a smaller subordinate wrapper that we, that we use here. So a failing function is in this case, a printing function is in this case fail, and it will, as a first argument, it gets the status. So that's fine. And that should be it. Apart from these uh, ugly uh, fixed uh, limits that we have here currently. And in error reporting, I'm never quite sure what to do because I really don't like to dynamically allocate anything in my error reporting because that's always a weak spot. Okay, that's fine. So let's try. Let's actually um, take this out again and say And let's look at a let's look at a case where we get 
some interesting error reporting. I think this one might have something interesting. to see if our new our new context reporting is already active. So test JVIC2. Let's see. Yes, we did get a new modern report. Starting here, reading file, that's nice, that's the same as before. File data stream, we have a seeking substream and within that a limited data stream. We don't really get any nice information about them, but this is something we can add now quickly, I think. Because we can now explain in our code why we are, for example, installing this limited data stream. That looks very nice. So let's use the new features to improve this error message by actually, so let's go to a JBIC2 code. My two keys already dropping out. Um, let's go to limited uh, data stream. So here, for example, for a generic, for an arithmetically coded generic region, we create this limited uh, data stream. So that's what we actually can then say when we we init the limited data stream. And we can actually say limited stream, how is it called, context, context description data. And set this to arithmetically Uh, coded what were to use region is already 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 has a specific meaning in JBIC two. Could you, I mean, yeah, let's just call it for now arithmetically coded data.
See, that's nice. So we, we see now that the limited data stream here is representing an arithmetically coded data region. And the next, we will now also make the, the, the substream, so seeking substream, um, explain what it is actually about. And let's see first if we do, have, do we have another limited uh, data stream? No, no in it. So seeking substream in it. We have one here, so let's set its uh, context description data to JBIG2 embedded JBIG2 page page, and there will be another one that is the globals. And so we can already immediately distinguish in the error messages we get whether the problem was in the globals or in the page stream without, without going into the file and actually um, painfully navigating in the binary file and so on. I just have, oh yeah, the seeking substream. I think the seeking substream, no, does it have its own? Uh, does it have its own function for? No, it uses the default function, right? Everything except file and inflate uses the default. Oh, these are probably not the ones that are active here, but this is something in our unit test probably. Yeah. Exactly. Let's just call it single stream. Oh no, actually, if this is a sequential file, another sequential file, then it's it's really the, the segment segment body stream. Of random access JV2 file. Uh, 
let's call it segment headers and this segment data. Look how nice this is becoming. We are reading a JBIG2 file, file data stream. We see how long it is. We see that uh, there is a seeking substream inside which represents the JBIG2 segment data of the, it's a random access JBIG2 file. These are ending at the same byte. We see that immediately. Uh, we see that we are, yeah, we, we are about 6K into the segment data and we get an arithmetically coded substream. And within this stream, we see some problems. Yeah, the next big thing will be to improve this, this flat context region that actually shows the bytes around the error and so there's <clears throat> also a lot to improve there. And, and to link this with the nice hier hierarchical report here. But let's just, let's just compare this because that's exactly the, the same case that caused this this error message so what we have now so that's that's the design that was the design that we made and that this is what we actually have currently implemented this is already so much clearer than, than this here. Let's see if we get all the information. So here we get an information how many, we don't know which substring that is, we don't know uh, what has this 29k bytes left. We have no idea. Here we see um, the seeking substring that is the JB to segment data has that many bytes left. So that's much more meaningful here. If you know how to read the errors, of course, but uh, at least you, you know what we are talking about, JBIG2 segment data. It has so many bytes left. Uh, here, a relative position, 5741, relative to what? Here we see exactly relative to what? So this is relative to this substream that starts at 92, which is the JBIG2 data segment stream, and it starts at 92 relative to the file beginning. So it's all is clear here. Uh, substream length we could easily calculate here. So if we, that's that's one thing we do not really show here. It's maybe something we we should or could show in addition in addition here the the length already calculated but we can easily calculate it by calculating end minus beginning that's exactly the same number here substring starting at 92 extending to we have this here uh, currently at we have this here the next fetch position this is this is the only thing that is currently missing that that is something we had in the old reporting. I don't even know it is if it is very useful, but uh, we could we could add this to the seeking substream um, report. Then we have this limited substring with 10k left. What is this? We here we actually see exactly it is the arithmetically coded data. We have read so far six bytes of the arithmetically coded data. That's also very interesting. We did, that we did not see that here immediately. We could calculate it, but we have read six, six bytes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Yeah, that absolutely makes sense because here we have two 32-bit values that are not yet arithmetically coded. These are some, what are these? Uh, I actually, we, we, should, we should even add more context here. We will do that later that we know that actually um, which segment we are in, for example. We should add that in between here and I have ideas how to add context reporting in between. In quite a simple way actually. So this is something that we will do, but not today, I guess. Or maybe not, at least not on the stream today. That we see, okay, we are in this and this uh, JBIG2 segment. Uh, and then in, within this segment, we have the arithmetically coded data. And these, this, this stuff here, these are two 32-bit um, values that are not yet arithmetically coded. And here, the arithmetical coding starts. And I actually want to even mark that here, that here we see arithmetically coded data starting here. That would be so nice. Um, yeah. So we are already quite close to our design. We don't yet see something like this that we see. Uh, of course, we are not in the PDF file, so we don't see this, but we don't yet see that we are in a text segment. That is something that I would like to see. Now, apart from this, pretty nice. We, I think we have only one sequential file and that is actually working so we don't get I would because I would like to see the report from a sequential file apart from that I, I think I will now start to wrap up this stream so let's uh, let's clean up a bit First, uh, let's see if every if we can still compile everything. Actually, we should yeah we should remove this ugly debugging code. But I still want to. I think I still want to extract some satellite data. What I will do is that I I will uh, wrap it in an, in one of these if devs We have too much debug code in this file, but I mean, we are still in prototyping, so that's how it is. 
So at least now we can search for it and it's all deactivated currently. One thing we can still clean up, I think I can remove all the, the old fail context code. Let's first run a test. Oh, ah, yeah, of course it's failed. Of course it is failing because we messed with the test. Where did we mess with the test? Here. So we need to skip the invalid file 13. We need to restore this. Now it should pass, it just takes a long time. <clears throat> if everything passes, then Uh, we can remove this old interface stuff. The fail context fn. And all that is related to it. Just let's let's wait for everything to pass so we do not get into a mess here. <clears throat> Uh, this will actually remain the same, this fail context, but these will be gone. So this one will be gone, this will be gone. This will remain. This will be gone, this stuff. This will be gone, yeah, a lot of, lot of things will be... Okay, JVIC2 passed, that's fine. JV2 first will be interesting to see the output because that generates some stream error reporting. Could be that we have some, some work to do there. Wow, this is so slow. I already mentioned that we need, <clears throat> quite soon we need to do a session to speed up our unit testing, or integration testing rather. That's why it's slow, because it's doing a lot of stuff, integrating things. Fine, we pass. So let's rip out the old stuff. Gone, nothing interesting here to see. Gone. We keep this, this is the old stuff, this is gone. Um, gone. Um, nothing interesting, the, the remaining bytes left, this we have gone. Okay, here we, I think the only thing is the fetch, the fetch position. And we should maybe make a note for ourselves here.
that we don't forget this. This will be gone away. Okay, nothing interesting here. Okay, this is just delegating to the input, so we have something much better now, actually. Gone. Not gone. Great, let's see if things still compile. So the problem with, I think I need to, to improve my setup somehow that I can run the make call in the terminal so I can keep using Vim while the compile is running because it is so slow. Let's run the tests again. And uh, let's take a look at our to-do list. So. Yeah, we are approaching the situation that we want to have. Um, this is all done. This is just, uh, this is, yeah. Let's see if we, if we have, Okay, this is still open. This is about the flat context reporting. And these are, this is stuff that we can solve relatively easy, easily now, I think. This is done now. We have generalized fail context function. Uh, there's still a small part to do here and that is to create um, a nice interface for um, generating non-failure context, re context reports. Yeah, this is, this is mostly done now. That is mostly what we did today. Yeah, still, still some stuff remaining, but it's much better now. Error messages are actually becoming useful and very useful at that. I already had some cases, even with the old error messages, this were already quite good because they had this flat context that where I could immediately see what the problem was without firing up a hex editor and uh, just fix the code and go on very, very quickly. And that's really the, the main purpose of this is to save a lot of time and frustration in debugging because in this project I will, I will need to parse a lot of data in different file formats and I will always have these very nice kinds of contextual error reports to help me. Question is if in this in these cases we want to actually overwrite this screen uh, context title or if these technical names here are fine. I mean, they are mostly use. They are mostly meaningful to me as the developer. They are not so useful to to a user.
<clears throat> but anyway, I, I mean, for anyone, anyone except a really, really sophisticated user, all error messages are the same. It just doesn't work. That's that's what the user understands usually. Okay, I'll wrap up the stream with that for today. So <clears throat> thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye.